Welcome back to Mark Strong Edits. Today we're going to take a look at creating a simple subscribe animation for your own YouTube videos. Let's check it out. Alright, so we'll go ahead and start by creating a new composition and we'll name this subscribe. And I'm going to have my frame rate set to 24 frames and the duration will be 6 seconds. And we'll hit OK. And with the text tool, we'll go ahead and type out our text, which will be subscribe. And we'll drag this near the bottom of the display. And so now we can begin animating this. So we'll hit the we'll hit the drop down next to subscribe. We have our animate button. And we'll start by animating the position. I'm going to hit the stopwatch next to position and I'm going to drag this this keyframe out just a little further in the timeline. And we're going to go ahead and move our text off screen. Cool, so pretty simple, it'll slide in. And then about here, we're going to go ahead and have it slide out. Pretty basic animation. We're going to give it a little bit of a wobble though once it slides in. So to do that we're going to hit the animate button and we're going to choose skew. We'll enable keyframes for skew. Not so much the axis, just the skew. And we'll start off by having it skewed to the right. Then we'll go a couple frames ahead, skew it back to the left. And we'll go right just a little further and we'll have it settle back at zero. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. So it sort of bounces in and then when it goes sliding out, we're going to drop a keyframe for the skew. Go a little ahead and we'll skew it to the left. And then we're going to animate the subscribe as though it's being clicked. So we're going to hit S on our keyboard and enable keyframes for scale. I'm going to hit U to bring up all my keyframes. And so we'll drag this a little further in the timeline, drop another keyframe. And then in the center, we're going to scale it up bigger. That kind of gives it the look like it was clicked. Now I'm going to create a new shape layer. There it is. Um, and with the pen tool, we're just going to draw a mouse cursor. And then I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard. This adjusts the anchor point. You want to make sure the anchor point is at the center of the mouse. So when we do, uh, when we scale it to animate it a little bit, you want to make sure that it scales from the center of the mouse and not wherever else the anchor point might be. I'm just going to adjust the mouse cursor just a little bit. We'll make it a little bit smaller. And then if you need to change the fill of the mouse color, you can do so by clicking the fill button up at the top and if you need to change the stroke color you can do the same as well from up here I'll leave them black and white um, and if you need to change the width of the stroke as well you can do so from here too so with my shape layer I'm gonna hit P on the keyboard so we can start keyframing the position So I have it earlier in the timeline out of frame and then it slides into frame. I'm going to hit S and we'll enable keyframes for the scale. And 
so I'm gonna match it up with the scale of the subscribe but when the subscribe gets bigger we're gonna make the scale of the mouse a little smaller to make it look like it clicked and then we'll make it go back to normal just by copying and pasting the first keyframe for scale Perfect. So one last thing that we're going to do, we're going to draw our subscribe bell. So to do that, let me grab my screenshot. I'm going to hit Y on the keyboard and adjust the anchor point over the bell. And then I'll hit S, we'll scale up our reference. And that just scales it up right where I need it, which is right over the bell. All right, so we can get rid of, actually, we still need our reference. We'll right click, we're gonna go to new, and we're gonna create a new solid, and we're gonna name this bell. And then with the pen tool, we can just trace around the bell. You might be able to just Google the bell, but I like to do everything the hard way. Doesn't need to look too perfect. By the way, with the pen tool, when you hold Alt, you can adjust this additional point, makes it easier. Makes it a little bit easier when creating your mask. All right, so we can turn the bell layer back on. I'm gonna create a new mask, but it's gonna be with the rectangle tool. And we'll just make a rectangle along this gap, but we're gonna change it from add to subtract and now we're going to grab the ellipse tool and we'll create the little ball that goes inside the bell and so that this is affected by our subtract layer we're going to move mass 3 in between 1 and 2 and so now we can get rid of our reference layer All right, so we have our subscribe sliding in. We're gonna have the bell come flying into the scene as well. I'm gonna hit Y on the keyboard and adjust the anchor point to be at the top of the bell. And we'll hit P. And so we'll make it to where it shoots from here. Speed that up a little bit, maybe a little more. Perfect. We'll hit R on the keyboard. We're going to animate the rotation as well. So we'll hit the keyframe button for rotation. I'll hit U to bring up all my keyframes. We're just going to animate the bell sort of swinging there in place, almost like it landed on a hook. Perfect. Last thing we're gonna do with the bell is animate the scale. So we'll hit S, enable keyframes. We'll drag this ahead just a little bit. And it's gonna scale from zero to 100. And 
then just like subscribe. We're gonna animate the scale as if the bell gets clicked as well. So we'll drop two keyframes, keeping its position the same. And then in the middle, we'll increase the scale. And then we're gonna animate the mouse to move over to the bell as well. So we'll drop a keyframe, keeping its current position where it's at. Go ahead just a little further in the timeline. And we're gonna drag the mouse over to the bell. And then we're gonna copy the scale keyframes and just paste them. All right, and then keeping the position where it's at for the mouse, we'll drop a keyframe and then go a couple frames ahead and we're just gonna make it go out of the scene. And then to make the bell leave the scene, we'll drop a keyframe for position. And we're gonna make this just drop out of the scene. Now one thing you might notice since we dropped this other keyframe for position is the bell is kind of floating there in space. So if this happens to you, it just means it added a curve. And to fix that, all we have to do is hold Alt and then drag this little line right here. And that's gonna remove that curve. So now our bell isn't just floating in space anymore. And then kind of as a finishing touch, we're just gonna enable motion blur for all three of these layers. That's the three dots. And now we're ready to export. So to export this and keep the background transparency, the best way to do that, actually before we do that, in case you're ever using this on a bright colored background, let's just add a drop shadow to this. So I'm gonna create a new adjustment layer. And then in the effects and presets, we're gonna search for a drop shadow. And we'll just drag this on the adjustment layer. And this just gives everything beneath it a drop shadow. So I'll increase the opacity to 100% and maybe increase the softness about seven pixels. Okay, I lied, 15. So that keeps our animation visible even if it's on a bright background for whatever video you might be dropping this in. So now this is officially ready for export. To do so, we're gonna hit composition up at the top of the screen and we're gonna hit add to render queue. And then the output module, we're gonna click lossless. We wanna make sure the format is set to QuickTime, but under channels, we want it to be RGB plus alpha. And you'll hit okay. And then the output too, just choose the folder you wanna output this to. And I'm gonna call this subscribe animation. I've made like three exports, so I'm just gonna call that subscribe animation four. And then just hit the render button. And that about wraps up this tutorial. Thanks for checking out this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next one.